If you're planning on starting a podcast and you want to know how to record it, or if you've just launched and you want to know how to get the best recording possible, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, Joe here. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to record a podcast from home to get you the best sound possible. There are a few different methods, different ways that you can record a podcast, and which one you choose will depend on your budget and the format of your podcast, whether it's a solo podcast, or if you have guests, or if you have a co-host. I'm gonna go over the methods that are worth considering and give you my suggestions on which one you should choose depending on your situation. There is a fair amount to consider when recording a podcast, but I'm gonna keep things straightforward and easy to follow in three steps. To start off, we'll be talking about the equipment. Whichever recording method you end up using, you'll find out what you need. I'll be giving you options for whatever your budget is. Next, I'll go over how to set up the equipment and where you should be recording for the highest quality result. And finally, I'll let you know what software you'll need to record and how to actually record your episodes. And before you go, I'll give you some guidance on what you'll need to do next once you've recorded your podcast. Making sure your podcast has the highest audio quality possible is really important in keeping your listeners engaged, keeping that retention rate up, um, and giving your listener a better experience, which is going to help to grow your podcast. I know it may not seem like it matters too much, especially when you're just starting out. And yeah, it's, it is much more important just to get started if, if you really don't want to have to worry about about the audio quality too much for your first few episodes but it really is a lot easier and can be a lot cheaper than you think to get really high quality audio so it's worth keeping this in mind as it will help your podcast in the long run now let's get started so as i mentioned the equipment that you'll need depends on a few things it depends on your budget your recording space and the format of your podcast uh, but i'm going to give you some options for all of those situations and you can see what fits you best now if you're just starting out you don't actually need any of this equipment you could record directly to your phone using the built-in microphone and then just upload it directly from your phone as well but for anyone who's willing to invest just a small amount of money uh, into their podcast and if you're after something that's a little bit better than the base quality uh, then there'll be a few things to add to your shopping list so first up is the computer now this is something that that most of you will already have of course it doesn't matter if it's a pc or mac when uh, desktop or laptop anything any modern machine will will do the job really uh, this is what you're going to be running your recording software on and recording your podcasts onto and next up you'll need a microphone now there are thousands of microphones out there um, but most of them are going to be way more expensive uh, and have have features that you just don't need so we can narrow it down here. There are a couple of choices that you need to make about the type of microphone that you're going for, and I'm going to explain those choices and the difference they make to your recordings. So first, you'll need to decide if you're going to go for a USB microphone or an XLR connected microphone. So a USB microphone, for example, the Audio-Technica ATR2100X is a microphone that you plug directly into your computer, into the USB port. It will have a cable with a USB connector on the end um, and it has all the electronics and everything to boost the signal, uh, boost your voice when it goes into the microphone and you can record directly on your computer using that. They're really simple to use and you don't need an audio interface to record with them, which is a separate box that goes between the microphone and the PC, which the XLR connected microphones do need. So an XLR connected microphone, um, which is typically most microphones you'd find in the professional recording space, um, will have an XLR connector. If you haven't seen one, they look like that. Uh, and this is an example of an XLR connected microphone. It's the Rode M1. Now the difference between these mics and the USB mics is that you'll need, an, like I said, an audio interface, a box that goes in between your microphone and your computer. For example, the Focusrite Scarlett uh, Solo. And I'll go into more detail about those shortly. Um, so normally it's going to cost you a little bit more to get set up because you've got to get that audio interface as well. Um, but it does give you a lot more flexibility. You can swap out microphones. The microphones tend to be a little bit cheaper for what you get because they don't have to have those uh, that preamp inside of it. And normally it will get you slightly higher recording quality if you're using one of these microphones with a quality 
audio interface. So if the highest possible quality is something that's really important for you, then I'd go down the XLR route. If you just want something that's really simple to use, um, then the USB option might be for you. And the other choice that you'll need to make, which is one that tends to get forgotten about or left by the wayside, uh, or it just goes unnoticed by a lot of podcasters, is if you're gonna be using a dynamic mic or a condenser mic. Now these are two very different types of mics. The way that they pick up your voice is different and it's really important to understand that difference um, before you go buying your microphone. So an example of a dynamic mic, again, it would be the Rode M1 or that Audio-Technica USB mic that I mentioned before, um, or on the higher end, something like a Shure SM7B. Now, dynamic mics are very robust, hardy microphones, uh, and they're very directional, uh, and they normally only pick up pretty much just what's in front of them. So, for example, if I'm talking to, in, a, into a dynamic mic like this, it's gonna pick my voice up very loud and clearly, and I'm actually recording this video with a dynamic mic so you can hear um, that it's very clear, very intimate, very warm, and it doesn't pick up much of the room sound behind me. So if I've got something going on in next door or my room sounds very echoey, it's not gonna pick that up very clearly, which is a good thing. A condenser microphone, on the other hand, something like an Audio-Technica 2020 or a Yeti Nano, which is a very popular podcasting mic, uh, picks up a lot more of the room sound. It's a lot more sensitive. If you've got, again, if you've got something going on next door or if you've got an untreated echoey room, it's gonna pick up those echoes. Um, so you're gonna get a more detailed recording a lot of the time, which is why they work very well on instrument recordings um, and for sung vocals. But if you're not recording a, in a professionally treated space, then it might sound a little bit echoey and less intimate than a dynamic microphone. So I recommend a dynamic microphone unless you're in a professionally treated studio. Some choose to use the, the mic that's built into their laptop or their webcam, but I don't recommend this. It sounds bad. It doesn't sound very intimate or, or clear a lot of the time. And to be honest, you can get a dedicated dynamic microphone for even li as little as $30, 20 quid off eBay, um, something, something like this one here, and, and it sounds so much better than, than a phone or a webcam or something like that. So it's really worth the investment if you're serious about your podcasting. Then the next piece of equipment you'll need is an audio interface. Of course, if you're using a USB microphone, you don't need this, you can skip onto the next one. But if you're using an XLR connected microphone, you'll need either an audio interface, a mixer, or a portable recorder. They all do basically the same thing. They convert your analog signal, the voice that's going into the microphone, into a digital signal that your computer can understand. Uh, they boost the signal. They also normally have a few extra features, which is another bonus of getting an XLR connected mic rather than a USB microphone. For example, they'll have a headphone output that you can adjust with dedicated controls. They often have a few inputs. So if you're recording in the same room with a co-host, you can connect up a few different microphones. I recommend taking a look at the Focusrite Scarlett series of audio interface in audio interfaces or the PreSonus audio box, they're a good budget option. Some choose to use a mixer. This you tend to find more in, in live situations or situations in, in studios where you've got sort of four or more people talking. I wouldn't really recommend one of these uh, for recording at home just because they're very bulky. They have a uh, more of a learning curve to them and they can often cost a lot more as well. You can also go for a portable recorder like a Zoom. These are great for if you if you podcast on the go a lot. You can record directly to the to an internal SD card on a lot of them. Um, so you don't even need a computer to record to. But again, if you're just recording your podcast at home, whether that's just yourself or maybe you're with a, with a co-host, I recommend going for an audio interface. Next up, you'll need some kind of stand or mount for your microphone. There are a few different options here. You could go for a desk stand, similarly to this one. It's got a flexible neck so you can position your microphone. You can go for a boom arm that clips onto your desk. Uh, you can go for a traditional kind of mic stand just that stands on the floor. I normally use a standing floor mic stand just because I've got a lot of them. But if you don't have one yet, then the best option is probably getting a boom arm that clips onto your desk because they isolate the microphone from the vibrations uh, that you get if you tap the desk or something like that. If you can avoid it, I wouldn't rely on the desk stand that comes built into some microphones um, because you will be picking up a lot of vibrations when you tap the desk or anything like that. But again, it's whatever you feel works best for your setup, for your space, and make sure you check for compatibility before going ordering anything. Also, whichever mic you're using, make sure you get yourself a pop filter. 
uh, just to get rid of those plosives, those windy p -p -p sounds. Uh, they can really ruin a recording and make your editor's job a bit harder. Um, or one of these. Um, one of these foam balls, whatever. Even if your microphone has one built in, um, one of the, the metal grills on the front, I recommend putting one on top. It makes a huge difference. I've taken my windshield off at the moment just to demonstrate. Puh, puh, puh. You get that horrible, nasty, windy noise. Um, if you put one on though, puh, puh, puh. they're gone. So highly recommended, they're really cheap. Please use a pop filter. And finally, you'll need some headphones, especially if you're recording an interview with a guest um, or with a co-host because if you don't have headphones and you're recording over the internet with somebody and you can hear them coming at your speakers, their voice is gonna be coming out of your speakers and back into the microphone. It's gonna create this horrible echo effect. So if you can get a good pair of closed back headphones, uh, that's gonna give the best isolation possible. But even if you only have, have a pair of earbuds or um, AirPods, something like that, it's still much better than, than monitoring on speakers. And next up, it's time to choose where you're gonna record in your home and also get your equipment set up. Now, you might not have any options when it comes to choosing where to record, depending on how things are set up in your home. Um, but if you do, ideally, you wanna go for somewhere that's not too large. Don't recommend recording in a big open plan kitchen diner, something like that, because it's gonna sound very echoey. Try and go for a slightly smaller room and a room with a lot of soft furnishings. So if it's in a bedroom, you'll have your bed there, some thick curtains, um, your sofa, just things like that. This all helps reduce the reverb and the echo in the room and gives you a more professional, intimate result. As a podcast editor, what I find is that a lot of podcasters tend to pick up a condenser microphone because they've been recommended it or it's, it's just shown up at the top of the list um, and they'll record in somewhere like a kitchen diner with a lot of um, hard walls, hard, hard surfaces and the result tends to be very echoey, very roomy a lot of background noise, kind of like this. This is me recording in an untreated room with a condenser microphone. What you want is a nice, warm, intimate recording with as little reverb and background noise as possible, like this. Here's an example of me recording at my desk in a well-treated room with a dynamic microphone. Now we're all set up, let's move on to the recording stage. I'm gonna go over what software you'll need to record with depending on the format of your podcast and I'll show you the process of actually taking the recording and what you'll need to be looking out for. So let's talk about the software that you'll need to record your audio into. Now if you're going solo, you technically don't need any additional recording software. You could just use the basic voice recorder that comes built in, to, built in with, with Windows. Uh, but I don't recommend this. I recommend using a digital audio workstation or door um, to give you more control over your recordings. It's not as complicated as it sounds though. If you have a Mac, you probably already have a door installed called GarageBand. Um, and if you have a PC, then you can go ahead and install Audacity. And you can use Audacity on Mac as well. What using a DAW does is it gives you much greater control. You can go back and record over sections. Um, you can see the waveforms coming up and see if they're too loud or too quiet. Uh, and then you can also edit. If you're editing your own podcast, you can edit within the software as well. You can also record multiple tracks at the same time using a DAW. So if you're not going solo, then it's really the only option. I am gonna show you in Audacity how to record your podcast, but if you want a full overview of how Audacity works from installation uh, all the way to recording, editing, mixing, everything, I do have a free 21 video Audacity course, the Audacity Accelerator course. Uh, on right here on YouTube and I'll leave a link in the description uh, for you so you can go and check that out. If you're recording with a guest or co-host remotely, which is very common these days, uh, you'd also obviously need some kind of video voice calling software like Zoom or Skype. You can set them up to record the conversation. Just make so sure you set it so that all the guests are recorded to a separate WAV file. It will make it much easier when editing. Uh, it will get you a higher quality result. And also I do recommend um, all the, all the speakers does record a local copy as well. So if you've got Audacity running on your computer at the same time, uh, just so you get the, the full quality audio that's not affected by your internet connection. And also it means you've got a backup. 
Now, if you're recording guests who either can't or don't want to record a local copy for themselves, I recommend using an online um, podcast recording service such as Zencaster or Squadcast. Um, they record it on their side and then you can download the files after and you tend to get a much better result out of it than, than the direct uh, audio from Zoom or Skype. So here we are in Audacity on PC. Um, this is pretty much what it looks like when you first install it. Uh, at the top here, you've got the device toolbar. In the device toolbar, you see the little mic icon. If you just click on, click on the box next to it, the drop down, and you can select, it will either have the name of your audio interface in there. So for, my, for me, I've got a Focusrite interface, so it's right there. Or it might have the name of the manufacturer of your microphone, if you have a USB microphone, or just say generic USB mic. So once you've selected the correct one, uh, you can switch to, to mono recording because you're just recording one channel. Or if you're recording two, you've got two channels coming into your audio interface, uh, you can select stereo and it will record whatever's in channel one and channel two of the interface, which you can always split up later. But right now, I'm just going to record in mono. And then it's a simple case of hitting record or pressing R. And then here we are. Hello, welcome to my podcast and this is me talking. Uh, and yep, and then you just hit space to stop or hit stop and you've recorded your very short podcast episode. And then you can go to file, export, export as WAV to export the full quality audio to send off to your editor. Or you can edit inside of Audacity um, and mix and export as an MP3 ready for your your podcast host. But again, in the Audacity Accelerator course, I go over how to do all of this. But yeah, there's loads more you can do with Audacity and with any DAW, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, but for basic recording of a podcast, it's actually really quite simple to use. So that's it. You've got your podcast episode recorded. The next stage is, of course, editing. If you're editing the podcast yourself, again, I've got tutorials um, that will go over how to do that. I'll leave a link in the description. And your podcast will also need mixing and mastering to ensure it's, it's loud enough, it's the correct format, it's all nice and balanced and and sounding sounding good. Again, I do go over that in the Audacity course, but I will be putting out more content in the future. So if you, if you don't want to miss that, then hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this video has helped you. I'll leave links in the description to all the products that I mentioned, um, but just do your own research. Think about exactly what you want from your setup um, and what your budget is as well. Make sure everything is compatible um, before you go, go out and buying anything because it really, it really depends person to person what what is best for you. So, how do you record your podcast, or how do you how are you planning on recording your podcast once you've launched? And it'd be great to see some of your podcasts as well. If you leave a, a link in the description, I'd love to check those out. So, for more podcast recording, editing, and mixing content, just hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.